Welcome back to my channel, Royal Family, Millinator Gods of Earth. I'm your host, Ramudisa the High King. Royal Family, if you're new and you enjoy the vibe of the channel, consider smashing the subscribe, the thumbs up. Let the algorithm know what's good. Let other like minded souls know that we're out here with a share. Royal Family, today I want us to discuss the French, the most unapologetic nightmare of all the neo colonial powers to date. Being forced out of Niger, being forced out of Francophone nations, being forced to go back to their dying economies, to their aging populations, to their declining birth rates. White supremacy is in its final stages, royal family, and it is, as expected, refusing to go gently into the night. As parasites do, parasites would rather release toxins into your body and cause you to go mad and all sorts of hallucinations also it can keep feeding off of you as is the fate of the french now our royal family the french are just a placeholder at this point never mind the french specific you know i'm talking about them all of them is europe 400 years of relying on african resources to sustain your civilization what happens when these african countries decide to use our resources for ourselves hmm? what happens when we decide to use our gold our oil our platinum or cobalt our coltan huh all the blessings given to us by our forefathers our ancestors our divine creators whatever you believe in royal family we're here in this day and age we are here and the French, having had a prophecy laid unto them that without Africa's resources, they would slide into a third world country. Worse, even, especially now. With a with a devastated economy post-pandemic. An economy that never technically recovered since the 2008 financial crash. Now add to it an aging population and a declining workforce. And the nations you relied on for 400 years like a parasite are cutting you off cold turkey. This is their fate. All of them. Niger, of course, is also a placeholder. The struggle is going on beyond Niger. But with the envoy being booted out, the French are afraid of a lot of things. A lot of things. Weakening power and the signs of um, a declining western influence french ambassador stays in niger defying junta as macron defends french, uh, french policy now i don't know what's going on in that entire speech i don't know how long it is it's about a lo an hour long or so hold up a sec yeah it's an hour long so i'm gonna watch that later on so i can do a follow-up video to this one but for now though let's touch on some news headlines French ambassador stays in Niger. France's ambassador will remain at his post in Niger. This was the message from President Macron after Paris passed the 48-hour deadline for its ambassador to leave the country. Must An be ultimatum the speech. laid out by Niger's coup leaders on Friday. Thanking the efforts by French diplomats in Niamey, Macron reaffirmed his support to the country's ousted president, Mohamed Bazoum. I believe our policy is the correct one. It's based hmm. on the courage of President Bazoum. So this must be the speech I'm going to watch later on. A zoom on the efforts of our diplomats and our ambassador in Niger, who will stay despite pressure from coup leaders. We do not recognize them. We support the president, mm -hmm. who has not resigned. Mm. Macron defended France's military presence in Niger, stating that without French intervention, the country, along with neighboring Mali and Burkina Faso, would no longer exist. If France hadn't intervened, wow. if our soldiers hadn't fallen in Africa, if Operation Serval, then Barkhane, had not been carried out, we would not be talking today about Mali, Burkina Faso, or Niger. Those states would no longer exist today with its existing borders. The comments come as anti-France tensions have been simmering in Niger. Tens of thousands rallied over the weekend in support of last month's coup, demanding the departure of French troops and accusing Paris of interfering in their affairs. 
Meanwhile, Niger's junta leader has ordered the Nigerian armed forces to go on maximum alert over foreign threats to restore constitutional order, while the West African bloc ECOWAS has been attempting dialogue with coup leaders while remaining on standby for possible military intervention. The junta has so far rebuffed diplomatic attempts by the bloc to reverse the coup. Well, 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 family. So the French are refusing to recognize that this is it. And as he said by his own admission, they recognize the president. The president that they installed, as I've said before, they recognize their um, Western representatives are representatives of Western democracy. They they recognize their puppets. Hmm? And so... He's in a panic mode, I'm sure. So this is the speech I'm going to watch later on, and I'll do a video about it probably tomorrow. But for now, though, these little clips and the media reactions, so I'll go in knowing what's about to happen, you know. So there he is giving an arrogant French speech of what they will not do. And there were more to that reaction. Um, the French President Macron concerned about diminishing Western influence. So the signs of change are here and they're doing everything in their power to resist. I don't completely mourn for them, but you know, I do mourn for the present generation. Like damn, you have been set up by a colonial past for a new dark age. French President Emmanuel Macron is making his annual address to French ambassadors today. He's been covering so far a serious... France, Macron warns against a risk of weakening Europe and the West. Hmm? Fear, brothers and sisters. Fear. They are freaking out. What does it mean when Africa and mineral-rich countries don't listen to Western powers? What does it mean when your first world civilization relies on our exploitation? You built everything that you have at our expense. We're emancipating. Topics including France's role in We're emancipating. French President Emmanuel Macron is making his annual address to French ambassadors today. He's been covering so far a series of topics including France's role in Africa and what he called a weakening of the West's role in the world. Let's listen. I believe our policy is the correct one. It's based on the courage of President Bazoum, on the efforts of our diplomats and our ambassador in Niger, who will stay despite pressure from coup leaders. Ah. We do not recognize them. We support the president, who's not resigned. France 24's Angela Diffley was listening to that speech with me, a speech that's still going on after about a good hour and a half. Angela Macron earlier was warning against what he called this risk of a weakening West. Tell us a bit more about that. Uh, yeah, uh, he was also referring to the, the BRICS Plus uh, summit recently. The- ah, ah. He wasn't invited to the BRICS Plus. He wanted to be part of the BRICS and he was given a hard no, a straight up no. Now he's out there. The last hope he had at an economic security and gone. This idea is also referring to the the BRICS plus uh, summit recently. This idea that uh, Western dominance is really being challenged now. And he said, you know, this is what's happening. We need to take notice of it. There is, if you just look at the Ukraine war, often a perspective from what we sometimes call the global south or any other countries outside the US and Europe that when a country is invaded uh, elsewhere in the world it is seen as a territorial dispute Uh, Mm -hmm. when it is a country which involves Europe or the US it is seen as a matter of universal values and uh, something quite different that really irritates countries outside the West and there's this growing challenge to the West I think he wanted to talk a little about uh, Africa as well, which he alluded to so much in uh, that speech. Of course, we've all seen what's been happening in Niger in recent weeks. And this is 
an anti-Western narrative, but also an anti-French narrative, which is increasingly taking hold in Africa. We saw it in Mali, in Burkina Faso, uh, in Niger. Emmanuel Macron was very forceful in his uh, defense of French interventions in those countries. He very made forceful clear indeed. To the ambassadors, it needs to be got across to the world that those governments invited France in to help them try to combat jihadist forces. And it, he demons know how to trick people so they may be invited. And when people wise up that, uh oh, this thing is not a, a, a spirit or, a, or this or that or the other, it's a damn parasite of the spiritual origin. And when they decide to get rid of it, what does it do? That's when things start to go bad. That's when you start, start having to call like a specialist, a spiritualist, or an exorcist, something, someone to help you exercise. That demon. That's the French. Uh, was very concerned about this narrative uh, taking hold. These wars are often not popular within France. A lot of French soldiers die in them. And he was uh, very keen to get across that this isn't uh, France rampaging around uh, Africa. But it is. asked France in. They did uh, make efforts to did combat they even really limited success. He now says... We must be careful not to overstay our welcome. It is clear that these interventions need to be reframed. He talk about, talked about a new partnership with Kenya, which, of course, is not a former uh, French colony. Uh -huh. So that is something quite different. And he also mixed it with uh, problems surrounding immigration here in France and this idea that uh, France, as a former colonial power in Africa, is being portrayed around the world as not dealing well with its former colonies, being too close to governments. He said that uh, France had perhaps made a mistake in being sometimes very kept good with its relationship in certain government, with certain governments and, and nurturing that, but ignoring civil society and uh, failing to take into account just how popular or unpopular those governments were. There are also implications, he said, for uh, people who have uh, backgrounds from those countries who now live in France. And he said, again, it needs to be got across to the outside world. Yes, France has made mistakes, as all former colonial powers have. But some of the positive elements of France's relationship with what? its uh, former colonies, both what? outside in Africa and amongst descendants of those people within France. Right, and what positive relationship between colonizer and the former colonized is there? That's the sickness of the colonial, of the post-colonial mindset. That somehow it was to our benefit. It requires and relies on the ability to induce Stockholm Syndrome in people to back them up. That's why he would rather um, seek the support of this president that was been couped in Niger. That they support him. They support anyone who's Stockholm Syndrome enough to say, yes, France, we love you. Yes, Europe, we love you. Yes, Britain, we love you. Yes, Germany, we love you. No. This is a neocolonial, anti-neocolonial anti struggle. Parasites feed off of us. Relegate us to hunger game warfare. And then they continue to live with cheese Her and wine. President Macron speaking earlier in that uh, clip that we played for you about France's unwavering support for the president of Niger. We're going to focus a bit more on that in, in just a moment. Uh, but Angela, just tell us what else uh, struck you from this speech, which Macron said was really a lucid assessment of the world, in his opinion. Yeah, this was an extraordinary speech. Uh, lucid. Uh, looking he's, well, he's at the late. entire world, although he said he wouldn't. Uh, we even talked about uh, polar, polar regions and also looking pretty much at the future and all its problems, ranging from uh, mineral resources to uh -huh. artificial intelligence to climate uh, challenges, and, of course, the fact that everyone needs to pull together to work on them. Two very important takeaways. He talked about the European Union having a greater role with NATO. France has recently become much more supportive of Ukraine joining NATO. That is new. Uh, it's not new in this speech, but it's a recent development. It vetoed uh, uh, the idea of NATO membership or blocked it before. It knows that it's not going to join very soon because the US is against it. And uh, the other idea, which is fairly new, which he alluded to, is expansion of the European Union. France in the past was very much against that. Angela, mm. thank you for that. France 24 is Well, 
I'm excited to look at that speech later on where he cries about the mineral resources, a lot, losing access to them directly. But I love getting clarity on these things, like I said before, going into the, the man's speech, so I hear him. Well, it was a wide-ranging speech by President Macron. He also spoke of what he called a weakening Europe on the world. I rant. I apologize if I'm, if I'm ranting or whatever. But as you can imagine, Africa's in a critical stage right now. Stage. Have a listen. I believe that the international context is becoming more complicated and that there is a risk of a weakening of the West and more particularly of our Europe. Firstly, there's a dilution of our population and our produced wealth of our share in the world trade. This has become even more true since the crisis of 2008 to 2010 and as a result mm, of the emergence like said, of major international powers. Like I said earlier, they've never really recovered since the crash of 2008. Well, listening to that with me was Douglas Herbert, our foreign affairs commentator. And Doug, so Macron there speaking about sort of anti-Western sentiment being on the rise. And he actually had a warning, didn't he? Yeah, he absolutely does. Uh, well, the warning is the weakening of both the European, the Western model, and more specifically the European mm. model within the sort of international order that's being upended. What he said is not in and of itself shocking. It's not stop the presses stuff. Uh, you know, we, we know that there has been disinformation. There has been trolling. There has been populism. There has been the rise of regional powers that oh, haven't always been forged in the same as you would see a democratic mold as a lot of the Western democracies upon which the international order, at least in the post-war period, has been based. What he attributes, this dividing, this, as you will, balkanization of the world into, into several poles, is the war. Russia's war against Ukraine, the invasion of Ukraine, and the, and the way NATO. against Ukraine, um, which has really forced a lot of the world, especially a lot of the uh, developing and poorer countries in the world, uh, who are dependent on <laughs> Russia, into uh, a more... Y'all need to get your narrative straight. Poor for... Who, who's poor here? We have the mineral resources, brothers and sisters. We are blessed. Do you understand? We are not poor for nada. They are the poor ones. It's their own prophecy, their own nightmare that the French will slide into poverty and third world should they lose access to Africa's resources. Hmm? This is their nightmare, ladies and gentlemen. I love it when they do everything in their power to sidestep the facts and the truth to try and maintain this illusion. They love their delusions. A subservient position with respect to Russia. Uh, they can't really afford to condemn Russia's stance with Ukraine. They don't have the luxury, you might argue, to uh, stand up against Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, in the same way that more developed, richer, more prosperous Western democracies, the U.S. and Europe, can do. So there's that on the, on the one hand, but then there's also this, like I said, this division, the southern versus the northern world, and this this rise, as Macron would put it, of real resentment, anti-Western resentment. Now, that resentment might be, as he said, real or imagined, or based on the manipulation by leaders with their own interests. No, 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 no. a lot of pooches across Africa, but you really, what's indisputable is there has been the rise of this anti-Western sentiment, both in Africa. So here they are, ignoring what they've been do doing for the past 400 years. Suddenly, they're being hated for no reason at all. Everyone is, no... Yeah, listen, when you cause this much chaos for this long, people will eventually identify you as a problem. When they treat you as a problem, now you want to complain. They don't want to be sorry for what they've done. They're not sorry for what they've done. The same way that we must be unapologetic in what we must do to emancipate ourselves from these fiends, brothers and sisters. Many countries in Africa, also in Asia, and it is striking and it is more virulent than it has been perhaps in more recent uh, decades. He says this resentment is going to be a danger going ahead, along with, as you said, the rise of these new powers. Saudi Arabia, you didn't mention it by name, prime among them. He's not wrong. Exerting its influence on the world stage. Another country not exactly known for its staunch defense of human rights and democratic models, at least not as the West perceives them. So these are all challenges for Macron, to use a very mi uh, mild word. But as you would say, a danger is perhaps, that's the warning. The danger of stark divisions as you have going ahead. Uh, these very not wrong. models uh, of governance. And when we think...
as long as they refuse to leave, as long as they refuse to leave, they can expect. About these kinds of divisions, Doug, is it fair to say that we see them within Europe as well, perhaps even within France? What's Hell yeah. fascinating right now playing out in France is sort of a, a, a mini polemic, uh, you know, uh, of what Macron was saying. Uh, former president here, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, mm. gave an interview in the past couple of days to uh, a, a newspaper, Le Figaro, a mainstream newspaper, and the TF1, which is a private a TV station, which he basically said that any hopes that Ukraine has of getting Crimea back are completely illusory. He said... Ukraine shouldn't even tender any, any entertain any notions of joining NATO uh, or the European Union, um, and basically saying that you know Russia must remain is and must remain a friend. And what's interesting here, this isn't some you know African uh, the uh, a junta leader in some African country saying this who resents Macron and resents colonialism and all of that. This is a former French president mm -hmm. who you might not say yes, Europe has remained sol solid and united uh, in supporting Ukraine up until this point, but the fact that a former French president, and not far right, just a right wing conservative French president, Nicolas Sarkozy, it very much resonates with the types of stuff we're hearing on the fringe in Germany with the Alternative for Germany movement in Italy, where, yes, the prime minister, Giorgio Maloney, has been supportive of Ukraine and has gone along with the European solidarity in favor of Ukraine, but is still the far right movement where a lot of the voices there are very much have a lot of sympathies with Russia. And right here in France, not just the far right, Far left, too. Those age-old historical, traditional sympathies for Russia remain. And very briefly, Doug, has there been a response from Ukraine to all of this? Well, Ukraine's trying to lock in uh, some sort of support going down the road. It knows what it's up against. Nevertheless, royal family, that be Macron. He is the canary in the coal mine, the proverbial... Um, fire signal or smoke signal letting western powers know that oh my gosh or mg whatever's happening in africa is actually serious and we should look at it blah 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 it's late it's late at least he's saying it out loud other other countries think they can manipulate their way into fact and truth but here we are ladies and gentlemen emancipation is happening and they are panicking. Macron defends French policy as a Niger Junta ultimatum. So yeah, they were going in on these discussions, on the speech, this very hour-long speech, and I'm going to check it out in a moment. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you're ever wondering whether or not there are signs of success, look no further than the Europeans and Western countries as they complain or avoid talking about things. The BRIC summit. The BRIC summit happened and Macron wanted to be a part of it. He did everything in his power to get invited. And then as soon as he wasn't invited, look what he turns around and does. And the irony that they are not being observed by every other African country, every other African person, every other African youth, every other people in the, con uh, in the continent and in the diaspora. One little country is telling you to leave and you're saying no. Yet you have interests all across the continent so do you think that other african countries are going to ignore what's going on over there in niger absolutely not we're seeing burkina faso we're seeing mali we're seeing i think algeria now is getting in on the game i think i saw a thumbnail somewhere saying algeria is also getting in on that game so here we are brothers and sisters blessed are we the bottomless pit the, tech, the, the, uh, the minerals that make the technology of today, the hands that will forge the technology of the future with our um, African birth rates as they blow in through the roof, with the French declining birth rates, their aging population, and a bunch of other consequences thereof, the weakening economy. I appreciate you for watching the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Emancipation is here and we're here for it. Stay royal, stay blessed. If you haven't subscribed already, do that thing. And I'll see you in the next one, family. Peace.